Afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So, I would like to welcome you all. For, first of all, good afternoon for my dear fellow Toastmasters and my dear guests. So, I would like to welcome you all for, for the 471st Oracle Trail Toastmasters meeting. So, we are going to start the meeting in a few minutes. And Few ground rules to be followed during the meeting, and uh, let us treat each other with love and courtesy and kindness. And, and along with that, I would like to uh, please switch off your mobiles. Uh, so, sorry, uh, keep it in silent mode. I will give you five seconds. For that. Okay, and while speaker is speaking, I do not uh, move in or move out of the room. So, next thing is uh, while uh, uh, let us uh, let us all participate actively in the in the session do, during the whole session, like in post uh, table topics or anything, you can participate actively in the session. And uh, another thing is time constraints, like. Be con conscious about the time, whether it is role takers or speakers, be conscious about the time. So, and everybody in our lives, everybody have a goal. So, and like in Toastmasters also we have a goal. So, where we provide positive learning experience and friendly environment to improve communication skills and leadership skills. So that we can uh, grow in our per personal growth or professional growth in our career life. So with that, I I would like to uh, open this session and open this meeting, and I would like to call our dynamic and energetic who always smiles and make others smile. I would like to welcome our president of our club, Postmaster Dinesh. Continue the class for our dynamic club and comedian of our club, <laughs> Toastmaster Ravindra, as the SA. Welcome all again. This is the 7471st meeting of Oracle Trailblazers Toastmasters Club. Now, uh, what is Toastmasters? I we have been repeating it quite a few times, but would again like to repeat because at the end of the day, this is the forum where I personally got to meet so many wonderful talents. So Toastmasters is a non-profit organization that was started way back in 1924. The person behind this wonderful group is, this wonderful organization is Ralph C. Smedley, who started it as unofficially, you know, uh, as a club, as a group where young minds or even older minds would uh, congregate, would learn more about the art of public speaking, which in the West is rather called as giving a toast. There were even evaluations done by older men on how the toasts were given. And that culminated today into 100 years of Toastmasters. We have, we are spread across 147 countries. We've got 147,000 plus clubs and a member count of probably three lakhs or something like that. So let's have a round of applause for Toastmasters. Okay, so today we have quite a few items in the fire, so I won't <laughs> take much of your time. And without any further ado, I would like to call upon the Toastmaster of the day, a person who, you know, although we are all from Oracle, but I share another close relation with this person because we are from the same state. And today, she is going to talk about our state's paramount god, Paramount Festival of our state, Rathyatra. So, uh, put your hands together for the Toastmaster of the day, Toastmaster Abhishek. Thank you, Toastmaster Dinesh, uh, our lovely president, for that lovely introduction. Uh, so, 
So hello everyone, very good afternoon. Very good afternoon to everyone, fellow Toastmasters and dear guests. Uh, so the theme uh, Rath Yatra uh, is very close to my heart. I have uh, grown up listening to the stories, seeing it, witnessing it, talking about it. So let's dive into today's theme. The first uh, slide, let's, let's stop here. I saw many media houses and newspapers reporting this as a car festival, and I don't know why, because they don't travel in cars. They travel <laughs> in trucks, chariots. So please use chariot festival if you're using it in English. Moving forward. Now, according to Skanda Puran, uh, Lord Jagannath has 12 yatras in a year. But Rath Yatra is said to be of paramount significance. Because uh, it is said that the Rath is so sanctimonious that if even if a person just touches the Rath, all his sufferings are alleviated. So this is the uh, OG Rath Yatra, Puri's Rath Yatra. And uh, this is not Photoshop, the crowd is very real. Uh, so has anyone, my first question, uh, has anyone ever visited Puri on Rath Yatra? On the Rath Yatra day? Okay, great. Brave souls from this <laughs> Uh, I I agree with the remaining people. I have never been to Puri on the Rath Yatra day just because of this crowd. Me and my family are absolutely scared and we don't get bookings either. But around 10, to, uh, 10 lakhs of people around flock to Puri and this is the grand road which we say Bada Danda in Odia. Bada is huge and Danda is the road. Uh, they flock and to just to witness this festival, just to get a glimpse of the Lord sitting on the Raths. Um, so let's start with some facts and then we'll move on to the mythological stories. Uh, second question here, can anyone tell me the Hindu date or the Tithi wise date of uh, for, when the Rath Yatra happens according to the Hindu calendar? Is anyone aware? Yeah, yeah, you're reaching the Ashadi is right. Shukla Paksh is also right. Not Okay, great. Uh, someone is saying online. Someone is saying Jitendra is saying. Yeah, Ashadi Beach. Oh, sorry. Oh, Dwarka Se Tithi. Dwarka Se. Ashadi Beach. Ah, uh, no, it's Jitia Tithi, Shukla Paksha, Ashad. So the second day of the first fortnight of Ashad. Ah, uh, I I got to know this today morning itself. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, yeah, so mainly as Dinesh also pointed out, Rath Yatra usually falls in between mid-June to mid-July. That's the date. Now, okay, let's see this slide. Uh, you can see three beautiful Raths. Can anyone tell me one last question? Uh, can anyone tell me what is the name of the Raths? No, no, no. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> Not from Odias. Please, non Odias. If anyone, at least anyone. At least say. the non Odias would have known that Rath. So, <laughs> this is a challenge. Yeah. So, anyone, it's all right. Even if you don't know. Or which uh, deity uh, adorns which Rath? Uh, yeah. yeah. No, you also. Okay. Okay, no problem. I am going to Jagannatha. Nandi Ghosh. Nandi Ghosh. Which one? Bigger one. You know, all are three equal size. Same size. Different height is different, but it's not really here. But she said currently Jagannatha is a little larger. No, just the same in the color. I am not getting the big one. Because in Nagarajpur, it is a different size. Where? Oh, Nabrangpur, okay, okay. But, uh, yeah, you were saying something? No. no? Okay, so Fast. the answer is the, from, starting from the leftmost, uh, the red and yellow, that is Jagannath's Rath, and it is called Nandi Ghosh, as Mamda uh, and Dinesh were pointing out correctly. Moving on to the second one, uh, it is Goddess Subhadra's Rath, uh, red and black. And red and green is the Taladhaj Rath, which belongs to Lord Balabhadra. And Subhadra's Rath is called as Darpa Dalan. Darpa means basically ego and Dalan means killing the ego. So that's what it stands for. 
Now, uh, just moving on to some more few facts. The Jagannath Temple of Puri was actually built in 12th century AD uh, in the form that we see now. It was built by Ananta Varman Chodaganga Dev of Ganga dynasty. But it is also said that the core temple was built by Raja Indra Dhyuna, uh, much prior to uh, this version. Uh, it is, of course, a very important part of Odia culture, Odisha's history, modern traditions. And it lasts nine day period. It is the most important period. But overall, it lasts uh, up to 12 to 13 days, completing all the rituals. It is, I'm very proud to say, it is celebrated across 160, almost 168 countries, major cities celebrated. And uh, the credit partly goes to ISKCON. They have popularized and organized Rathyatra everywhere uh, in the world. So, with this, uh, this, uh, this was the warm up. Let's move on to start our session. So, for the benefit of the guests, uh, I would say Toastmaster meeting is divided into three sections primarily. Better speaking, in which uh, members deliver prepared speeches with a particular objective. Better thinking, here members and also guests can participate, do some impromptu thinking on a, uh, on a topic given on the spot. That is called table topics. Next is better listening. So, members and role takers first take feedback on their prepared speeches and try to incorporate and implement the ideas in the future. But today we uh, probably won't have table topics, uh, but we have a great lineup of four prepared speeches. Before that, for feedback and evaluation, I want to introduce our general evaluator for the day. He works as principal product manager in people's soft development team. He believes the books we read and people we meet impact us the most. So he likes to read and meet new people. He's also passionate about fitness. Whenever time permits, he goes running, swimming, and does weight training. Please put your hands together for Toastmaster Anil. Let him help you. Okay, so good afternoon, everybody. I am the general evaluator for today's meeting. And I will be evaluating the meeting from start to the end. And then uh, I also have a few other role takers who will evaluate the meeting with me. So the first role taker is uh, Toastmaster Swati as timer. Can you please introduce your role? Yeah, hi, everyone. Today, uh, today I will work as a timer. I don't have prepared speech. Can I say in layman language? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So I will work as a timer. So whenever any speaker uh, is giving his or her speech, the minimum time duration is for a topic is like three minutes. In three minutes, I will uh, uh, show green flag, uh, green card. And uh, 3.4 minutes, 3.5 minutes, I will show yellow. And, uh, and uh, at four minutes, I will show red. And I will keep five showing. Single, Sorry. So, so for three speeches, time is five to seven. Seven. Okay, five to seven. So five, six, seven. Then. Sorry for that. So at uh, at seven minutes, uh, I will uh, keep showing red card for thirty seconds. So there's a speaker gets the buffer time to end the, their speech. Okay. Thank you. So just for clarity, for first three speeches, it's five to seven. Five, eight, six, yellow, seven, red. And red, you can skip showing until the speaker finishes. The last is from 10 to 12, right? So 10, 11, 12. Okay? 10 to 12. Okay. Yeah, thank you. And the second role taker is Toastmaster Bernali as the uh, car counter for today. Toastmaster Bernali. Hi, everyone. Um, so as the R counter, Today, I'm going to listen to each and every person who speaks here and make notes of the number of hours, ums, and ers that they use. I'll also listen for, um, note down uh, repeated usage of words or phrases, and also probably note down how many times people have used those so that they can avoid them in the future. And uh, I would also uh, make a note of uh, the number of times laughter is generated during this meeting. And I'll provide a report when called upon uh, towards the end of the meeting. Thank you. Over to GE. Yeah, thank you, Toshmasa Bernali. And the third role taker is Toshmasa Ravindra as grammarian. Uh, 
my role is as a grammarian so i will be monitoring the speeches and speakers who are speaking there and also the role takers so i will be monitoring the whole thing and uh, i will note down the good usage of english and not the good usage of english and also it's my responsibility to bring out the word of the day and the idiom of the day for today where you can use this word of the day and idiom, idiom of the day during your speeches so word of the day is paramount which means more important than anything else supreme uh, example <clears throat> the child's welfare must be seen as paramount so other example is nitrogen is of paramount importance to life on earth so phrase of the day is ions in the fire ions in uh, ions in the fire um, which means they are involved in several different activities or have several different plans so example too many ions in the fire can can sap your energy and prevent you from seeing which path to take so i encourage you all to use the word of the day and phrase of the day during your speeches okay thank you so i will we will provide our report after the speeches thank you over to the toastmaster <laughs> Master Ani. So I'll be introducing the evaluators and the speakers now. So for our first speech, um, I'll welcome the evaluator for L1 P2 speech. Uh, he is an engineering manager with Oracle Cloud, who also likes being around people and loves long distance running, but hates when both happen together. <laughs> So please uh, join your hands to welcome Toastmaster Karthik as uh, our first evaluator. Hi everyone, hope everyone can hear me and see me. Okay, yes. it's paramount everyone can hear me and see me. <laughs> okay, so my target speaker for today is Toastmaster Devi Tulsi Ram. She is attempting her level one project two speech. The purpose of this speech, the purpose of this project is to learn or review basic methods for writing a speech with a defined purpose and to present a well-organized speech on any topic. The speech title is childhood memories, speech purpose statement is humor or learning. Um, so target speaker, uh, please note once again, the length is five to seven minutes. And Toastmaster Devi, all the very best to you. I'm very eager to listen to you. And I'm sure everyone of here is as well. Uh, so our first speaker joined uh, Oracle last year as a strategic sales expert for HCM Fusion Applications. Uh, she is a proud pet parent to three dogs, Pluto, Mickey, and Whitey. She says, if I had not chosen sales as a career, I would have been a folk artist in painting. Please welcome the energetic Toastmaster Devi. Her uh, speech title is Childhood Memories. The stage is all of us. Thank you so much. So before I start, once again, very good afternoon to all the Toastmasters and guests. Thank you for joining us today. I have a quick question for each one of you and especially for the females who has joined us online as well as present over here. While growing up, who was your first, most favorite male? Yes. Father. Exactly. So for me also, it was my father and my love for him was paramount. However, I had to share him with the second most favorite, my brother in the house. And we had a very Tandava kind of a childhood. And why do I say that? Let's try to understand with few stories that I have written for you. The first story starts in Jaipur, Orissa. And uh, it is the time of summer vacations. However, in Orissa, summer vacations come and end faster than Chhattisgarh. So it is like uh, end of summer vacations and the beginning of monsoon season and also the time of chariot festival. So this is the time where 
all our cousins decided that uh, let's go to a lake. I always thought that it's a sea. Because <laughs> the name of the lake was Jagannath Sagar Lake and everybody would call it as a Sagar. And I was already too short by at that age. And uh, I couldn't see the other side of the bank. And I thought it's definitely a sea. And uh, I had this younger bro brother, Natraj, which I'm talking about. And he's like, I will also come. I will also come. So I have this trauma where my friends would tease me that your brother is like your tail and uh, he follows you everywhere. Because of that, I told him, you don't have to come. My cousin says, yes, he has to come. In the, as the outcome, they will become the grumpy day. However, we reach the lake. Lake is over flooded with water and there is so much of water that we decided it's not safe to play or venture inside. We will go somewhere else. My brother dances again. I will also come. <laughs> so I say that, why do you follow me everywhere? And I push him. Can anybody imagine where he was standing when I pushed him? Exactly. And he falls. I still remember what clothes he was wearing and the color of the water. My anger turned into fear. I was so scared. But my other cousins are way taller than me, even now and even then. And they pulled him out. The entire trip, wherever we planned to go, I was so scared and I was I was feeling guilty. Okay. So the score is Natraj is at one and Devi is at zero. Now, now since this is my speech, I should win, right? So let's share the story where I'm I'm the good girl. So the summer vacations ended and we went to my hometown. And the second story is about whether we choose a gun or we choose a rose. Anybody knows about this steam iron box of the old days, which will have a copper coil. So it will have a copper coil and uh, it will be very beautiful. Okay? <laughs> so it will be very silvery and inside that uh, there, will be, there will be something metallic and very sharp wire around it, which will work as a to heat the coil and that's how you iron it. So it was one of the summer afternoons that where that's when all the interesting things would happen between him and me. And uh, my father was always busy with work and he forgot that this spoiled one has been left over there. So we beautifully removed, it's like two layers like this. I remove it, I apply it on my hand because it was shining and we remove the wire. Now the fight is about, we are playing tug of war with that and the fight is about whether we make a gun out of it, my brother wants to make a gun, or whether we make a rose out of it. In that fight, we forgot that it is sharp, and suddenly I feel a steep pain in my hand. And I hold it like this, and I'm like this, my mother is sleeping next to us. Lights are off. And I say, I don't know what it is, let's go outside. Once we go outside, it's all blood. You can't see the cut, cut but there's a cut over here, <laughs> even now. So we could not do anything, we wake her up and uh, ultimately there is another Mahabharata at home. Both of us get very nice beatings and uh, now the score is 1-1. One, one. But since this is my story, it has to be 2-1 and 2 has to be daily, right? <laughs> so the final story and this is one of the fondest memory is about uh, sandcastle. Anybody has made a castle with their friends or cousins while yes. growing up? Yes. Everybody, right? Okay, so same generation. So, <laughs> so uh, our house was very near to the railway tracks because my father was in railways. And exactly where the railway tracks would end, there was a ground where all the kids would play. And there was also a construction office where they would keep the sand, brick, grit, etc. So when, and there was a very interesting big water tank. I remember how it looked, but I will not explain because I don't want to lose time. And I would be walking around the railing of that uh, water tank. One, one day when I was doing that, I saw that the sand is getting unloaded. Very excited. We can make a sand castle. I went and I started making a sand castle with my neighbor friend Prasad. Uh, very, very inquisitive, very enthusiastic. And from behind, I hear my brother's, brother's sound making, uh, <coughs> shouting at me. Devi, let's go home. I'm like, Natraj, it's done. Few more minutes, we will shake hand and we will go. He shouted again. And I wasn't, like, I couldn't anticipate whether he was angry or what he wanted to do. And even till date, he doesn't know what it was all about. 
and uh, I suddenly black out. <laughs> My head is on the sand and I hold it like this and the moment I took out, the blood is coming out. So he wanted me to come home with him, okay? And uh, instead of that, I wanted to do a shake hand. My father reaches home, first aid is done, and my father asks what happened exactly. So I know by now that we will get a beating. <laughs> so I said I was walking and I fell down. My mother shouts. <laughs> she was like, no, he has hit her again. <laughs> okay. So the idea or what the learning I am trying to take each day about my relationship my, with my brother and which is also growing with, with so many years is we have fought like this. There has been so many bloodshed, but we unite, right, each time. <laughs> but when we grow up, why does it change, right? It shouldn't change. Let not social media, your most loved ones also, even if it's a spouse, keep it separate. I think there is a viral meme going on, like paternal auntie is behind the dad's property and mom's sides, cousins are better than, just leave it all that. Please decide between you and your sibling how you want to take it forward and make it most memorable one because you cannot fight like this with anyone else and still stay united with same kind of affection. So that is the best part of this relationship which I wanted to share with all of you. Thank you so much for listening. I wanted to share this because this is the theme. So from the Tandava childhood, we are moving towards one of the best siblings known in our mythology, Lord Jagannatha, Subhadrapada and Balbhadra. Thank you so much. Thank you, Toastmaster Devi. That was a brilliant speech. Lovely banter between every siblings we know. And the ending was beautiful, beautiful painting in this slide. Moving on, uh, let's call on our uh, second evaluator. So, this person says he has been born and brought up in Oracle. He joined Oracle as a fresh graduate six years ago. He currently works with the OCI Security Center, an infamously hated team because they keep everyone accountable for their security concerns. Besides, he's a chai lover, a pizza lover, all in for long drives, and likes good old Bollywood music. I can also add one more point that he's a great guitarist. Please put your hands together for Toastmaster Nijo. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you, Toastmaster Nijo, for this I'll bore you longer for 12 minutes. You are not. Why you Sorry for that mistake. Uh, so we'll have evaluation for uh, another L1P2 speech now. Uh, I'll introduce the evaluator. Uh, working as a principal product manager in PeopleSoft development team, uh, he believes that books we read and people we meet uh, put an impact on us. So he likes to read and meet new people. And he's also passionate about fitness and running, swimming, and weight training. Please put your hands together for Toastmaster Ali. <laughs> Thanks for introducing me again. So, <laughs> so, so it is the same project that you just saw. It is uh, L1P2, and the objective is the purpose of this project is to learn or review basic methods of writing a speech with a defined purpose and to present a well organized speech on any topic. So, that is the objective of this speech. So, I wish all the best to the speaker and over to the team. Thank you, Toastmaster Anik, for laying down the guidelines. Uh, now I'll introduce the speaker. He joined Oracle two months ago as PMTS in OCI. Uh, he loves to travel and re reads books a lot. He believes in growth mindset and always tries to do things that he's afraid of doing. Please put your hands together for Toastmaster Krishna. For his speech, The Essence of Humanity. Technology and money. 
the two main pillars of modern society. We rely on them for almost everything. But what if, in some critical moments of our life, both these pillars come down crashing? After completing my BTEC first semester exams, my friend and I decided to celebrate it with a trip to Mumbai. For the next one week, we visited every nook and cranny of the city, right from Nariman Point to Roadside Dosa Point, Andheri to Streetside Pani Puri. After a week, we decided to add a divine touch to our trip. So we visited Shirdi. After the darshan, my friend left for Suraj on a personal endeavor, and I planned to return back to Mumbai. I reached the railway station, purchased a ticket, and boarded a general compartment. The compartment was so crowded, I couldn't find a place to sit. With so many people standing around me, I had to stand, and I, but I know that roughly the journey takes around five hours, so I happily stood there lost in my own world of thoughts. <coughs> the train was moving. At about 9 p.m., when I expected my destination to arrive, <coughs> I looked at a gentleman next to me and asked me, Sir, how much more time does it take to reach Mumbai? He looked at me in a state of shock and said, Mumbai, this train doesn't go to Mumbai, it's coming from Mumbai. <laughs> <laughs> I was stunned. That's when I realized I boarded the train just by looking at the nameplate having Mumbai written on it without checking whether it's a boarding point or a destination. I'm not sure what to do. I asked the same gentleman for advice. He said, not to worry. Get down in the station after the next. From there, you can catch a train back to your place. I was relieved. I devoted the train to the station suggested by him. And this was a very spooky, scary, remote railway station. It was very dark with few lights and no sign of human presence. <coughs> Gathering courage, I went to the ticket counter and asked the clerk for the ticket. When he asked for the payment, I reached out to my wallet only to realize I don't have enough money to purchase the ticket. Scared, I reached out to my mobile. It was already switched off due to low battery. <laughs> Time was ticking. The train was due in the next 15 minutes. And that was the last one for the day. My heart raced as I wandered from one platform to another in search of help. Luckily, on one platform, I saw a granny sitting on a bench waiting for a train. I approached her and asked for help. Initially, she was very skeptical, likely thinking I'm making up a story for some easy money. However, I persisted and showed my college ID card to gain her trust. She looked at it, she took it, looked at it carefully and handed it back to me. In that moment, I can see a spark in her eyes that was a blend of trust and kindness. She then accompanied me to the ticket counter, purchased me a ticket, and walked me back to the platform. While we were waiting for the train, I noted down her mobile number on a piece of paper so that I can return her money when I go back. So the train arrived. And as I was to board the train, the lady quickly approached me and started searching for something in her bag. And after a moment, she pulled out a food packet and handed it to me. That's when even I realized I hadn't eaten anything since morning. I was at a loss of words to thank her. So I just folded my hands in gratitude. The train started moving. I bid farewell to the woman and went inside the train. This time, I was lucky enough to find a place to sit. Eventually, I reached my home safely. Whenever I reflect on the story, I realize that even though technology and money are important pillars, more often it's the humanity that becomes our true savior. And the essence of humanity lies in empathetic listening. Whether or not we'll be able to help the other person is secondary. But sometimes listening empathetically means a world to them. Recently, I came across a quote that beautifully sums this up. Be kind, but everyone you meet is fighting a hard battle. Thank you.
So yeah, we stopped here. So as you can see the photo uh, in the right side, our children have made small, small chariots. And this is how many children have celebrated Rakhyatra in their childhood making small uh, chariots, uh, strolling them around in the street and asking for money also. You can do puja in the small chariot as well. <laughs> so, I have one question. What is, is anyone having any childhood memories regarding Rathyatra or how is it celebrated in their city? So, I was mentioning about Nabram Kot, right? Yeah. So, there we will have a local uh, something as in the exhibition kind of a thing uh -huh, and yeah. tribal people from nearby forest they will come and sell their goods fruits and all okay. the phone memory was they will make luck you know that uh, luck, yes, they yes. will make the toys of that mm -hmm. and they sell so i would cry every year to my maternal uncle that i needed and sometimes it will be sold out oh. so every year it will be like one drama in my <coughs> house wonderful beautiful anyone else please <clears throat> I was studying in class 8 when I visited Rathyatra with my parents and there I was lost. After four hours I found my parents. I was in class 8. I that uh, you we call that Ratha Dodi, Ratha hmm. rope. So to get that uh, little rope from that Ratha, I just uh, my I just lost my parents' hand and I went somewhere. So <laughs> four hours I found. <laughs> oh you got lost because you wanted that piece of rope. rope, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Okay, great stories. I think uh, as I told, uh, if I I have to share my story, I don't have really a story in Puri because I've never been to Puri on Rathyatra Day. Uh, but what we used to do was in my family, everyone would sit for the live telecast for at least five to six hours. So I'll prepare for that telecast like I'm preparing for a movie night. Movie night was not a thing back then. But I'll I'll make some uh, like I'll ask my aunt to make some homemade popcorn. I'll get a bottle of maza. I'll prepare the mat. I'll sit and I'll make sure my nani or grandma sits with me, so that he'll te she'll tell all the backstories, details of these ratha and how the rituals happen and everything. That was my memory of Rathyatra. Moving on from childhood memories comes the storytelling part or the story part. Why even Rathyatra happens? So the temple which you see in the right side is not Puri temple, it's the Gundicha temple. So who was Gundicha? Let's know. There's these uh, pictures depict the whole story. So yeah, let me take you there. Before that, uh, it is Rathyatra is also uh, known by several other names and one of that is Gundicha Yatra. Uh, yeah, so let's start with the story. So I told you that Ananta Varman Dev uh, built the temple, which is uh, the like the current temple was built by him. But before that, a fourth temple was built by a Raja called Indradimna. So Indradimna was a king in Avanti kingdom, which is currently uh, Ujjaini in uh, Madhya Pradesh. Uh, he was a very ardent devotee of Lord Vishnu. And as we can see in the first image, he's sleeping and Vishnu has appeared in his dreams. And he is telling that I reside in the Nilanchal mountain in Kalinga, uh, now Odisha. Uh, and I reside there, I am being worshipped there as Neil Matha. And he went away. Knowing this, being an ardent devotee, he wanted to get a glimpse of the Lord. Now he doesn't know the route to find, go to Nilanchal. Uh, so uh, there is a scholarly man we can see sitting near his feet. The king is... Uh, giving orders to his minister and also a very scholarly person called Vidyapati to go and find the route so that Avanti people can go and get a glimpse of the Lord. Now Vidyapati starts. Vidyapati reaches Kalinga, reaches the Nilanjan mountain also and he sees that there is a tribe whose leader is called Viswavasu. He was the leader and he used to worship Neil Madha. No one else was allowed to see him even. So the path was very secret. No one knew what is the path through the dense forest to reach that mountain and see. So 
Vidyapati had uh, was determined that he'll find the route. He he requested the king or the tribal king to take him there. Uh, so he put one condition. Vishwavasu said that I'll blindfold you. You cannot know the path, but I'll take you there. But Vidyapati was smart. So what he did, he packed uh, many mustard seeds in a potli like bag, uh, torn it a little bit towards the down uh, of the potli, and he just held it. Vishwavasu was unknown about these things. He had blindfolded him and he was walking. So his idea was, okay, I will not know the route, but the trees will grow and it will lead to that uh, temple. He went and had the beautiful darshan. He came back, he went to Avanti and he told the king that we have the route now. Everyone came to uh, Nilanchal and then uh, they also saw the mustard trees have grown now and it leads to that Gumpha or the cave where Neel Madhav was present. But upon going to the cave, it was completely empty. Uh, it is said that uh, the idol was no more there because a kind of deceit, deceit was used to get the secret path. So no one uh, ever got the glimpse of Neil Madhav ever again. So that chapter was closed. But knowing all this, Indra was a devotee, true devotee, and he repented. He did penance, he prayed. He was going mad because he was not able to get the darshan. Now again, uh, Vishnu came in his dreams and he told that there is one more way, a log of wood, as you can see in the third image, will come floating on the sea and you have to carve idols out of it. Now a log came and Indra Dimna was very happy, very excited again and he searched for the best of carpenters to carve out the most beautiful images that's possible. But no carpenter was able to uh, mark a cut on the log. It was just not happening. Again, he got frustrated. He prayed to the Lord. And after that, a very frail old man came and he claimed that I will build idols out of this. No one could believe. Even the strongest of the carpenters were not able to do this. How would you do it? So uh, he told, just give me a chance. And finally, he showed that he was able to cut the log. So everyone believed there is some power to this person, this old man. Uh, so they asked, okay, go ahead with the work. But he told that there is one condition on which I do this task. I will be locked in a room and you are not going to open this room until the task is done. No one gets to see the idols before the task is done. So they agreed reluctantly and he was locked in a room and he started working. Meanwhile, who was Gundicha? Gundicha was the queen of King Indradyumna. So uh, Gundicha used to go to the place where uh, the carpenter was working and she used to you know, put her ears near the wall and she used to see, uh, you know, hear the noises of carpenting, of uh, you know, the nails and all the work noises that will come out of a room. Uh, whenever she used to feel, uh, see, uh, hear the noises, she used to feel fine and assured that, okay, the work is going on. But slowly, day by day, the sound grew fainter and fainter. Now she was no more able to hear any noise coming from it. She was very worried that it was an old man who was sitting in that room and working. And we don't know if he's alive or something has happened to him. Everyone became concerned. But the king was persistent. No, he has said that we should not open the door. We shouldn't open it. But Gundicha was uh, insistent that no, let's go and open the door. Uh, no noise is coming. I'm afraid he's no more. So on heavy pursuance, uh, as we can see in the last image, uh, King Indradimna opened the door ultimately. And there was no carpenter. So it is said that the carpenter was Vishwakarma himself, who had come in the guise of an old man, and he was carving out the logs. But since they opened it before the date, uh, date of completion, uh, the idols always remained half made. And for this, for many, many years, uh, Indradyumna and Gundicha were worried if these idols can be worshipped. They blamed themselves that we got a chance to see the Lord, but again, we interrupted and this is all half made. Can we worship it? So all those things ensued, but it was settled. And finally, Indradyumna is said to have made the core temple <coughs> of uh, Puri and where these idols were placed ultimately for worship and puja. So this was actually the Gundicha temple. This is the birthplace of the three deities. Now Gundicha was again heartbroken. One, because she persuaded to open the door. 
Second, uh, because one more thing was Indra Dumna and Gundija had no children. So she probably saw these three deities as her children. And they were moved to a different temple. Now she was very heartbroken. She wanted to see them. So Indra Dumna had passed away after many years. Now Gundija was left alone. And all the responsibilities of the temple and all the you know rituals that will be done in the temple were given, handed over to Vidyapati's successors, the minister. So Gundi, Gundicha, during her dying phase, uh, for one last time, she went to Gundicha temple and she requested that this is my dying wish, that you have to come once every year uh, to, to this place to honor this temple. And that's how uh, it is said that the boon was granted. And that is what the Rathyatra is about. Rathyatra is held to honor this Kundija temple or as we say Mausima temple. Uh, it's mother-like figure. Kundija was a mother-like figure every year. So, <clears throat> so with this, um, we could know the story behind uh, the lore behind why the Rathyatra happens every year. And moving on to our next speeches. I'll call upon the evaluator for our third speech. Uh, he has been a trailblazer for seven years. He was a former club president, former area director, club coach and mentor. He's a strong believer of the fact that effective communication can impact lives. He's an avid reader and a writer. Please put your hands together for the incredible Toastmaster Narayana. Thank you, Mr. Evaluator. Ladies and gentlemen, I will be evaluating Toastmaster Mamda today. She's attempting her level one project three, and the purpose statement of that project is to practice applying feedback and serve as a speech evaluator later during a club meeting. This is going to be her first speech, and she'll be later on repeating the uh, incorporations in the next speech. All the best to you. Back to you. Thank you, Toastmaster Mamda. Now let's welcome our speaker. So she is a QA engineer with Oracle Fusion GRC product. She loves being around people and talking to them, sharing her experiences, ideas. She loves listening to all types of music. And she has a keen interest for old Bollywood songs. Uh, and recently, she also delivered uh, her uh, speech about Puri. So yeah, please welcome Toastmaster uh, Mangda. Speech title is Are You Getting Enough to Be Happy? No. Very good afternoon to all my friends. Before delivering my speech, I'll ask a question for all of you. Are you all getting enough to be happy? <laughs> no. So now, now I will tell some points so that you will feel happy, you will not feel sad. First of all, thing, like I also feel many times that I'm not happy, I am not getting enough from life, I don't have I, I'm not growing in my job, my kids are not doing enough, uh, my husband is not up to my expectations. <laughs> <laughs> so so many things are coming up. I'm becoming very fat, and so many things my head is falling, I'm not doing good, so many things come to my mind. Then uh, this is true that I we should keep ourselves motivated. So I started thinking positively, how I should keep myself motivated. So first of all, we should incorporate the gratitude feeling. I thank to God first. He has, like I am born as a, like a well human being. I'm not weak, I'm not dumb, I'm not blind. And so all of you. So you also thank to God that you all are like a proper human being who can see this beautiful, colorful world. They can hear the beautiful, noises, birds chipping, the water flowing, everything. And they can speak. And I am so thankful that I'm anticipating my speech in front of in front of all of you. Then second, I will thank to my motherland India. So now so many global crises is going on. You can see like first that uh, Russia and Ukraine. <coughs> then second, yeah. and second is that yeah. Hamas and uh, yeah. Israel. Yeah. Then third is that Afghanistan, you can see that people are, that women are not specifically safe, so much restrictions. So with this global crisis, I really thank that I'm born in a safe country, India. I'm really, really thankful. I'm like, 
democratic country. You can deliver everything freely. You can live freely. You can talk freely. Third, third, I will respect my parents. They have given me birth. They have given me so beautiful siblings. Four siblings I have. Four my younger sisters. They are more than my friends. Whenever I am sad, they are always there to motivate me. And they have given me good education. So I'm starting in front of you. I'm working in Oracle. They have they have find a nice life partner for me. So I'm very much thankful to God. Then fourth, my husband. So he has given me a secure life, secure house to stay, two beautiful kids. And he's always there around me, though he gets angry. Uh, but I'm <laughs> Internally, he's always there to support me. He's my greatest support. Like parents are old, I cannot ask support for them, but they are emotionally there to support me. Uh, my siblings are all busy in their lives. So only one who can support me in my times of need is my husband. Then fifth, all my friends. There are so many friends. I'm really lucky to have my friends in my life. They always help me. They always support me. So whenever I get demotivated, I'll think about my one of friend. Her name is Madhu Smita. She's from Odisha. She's my childhood friend. And nickname is Manu, and same name my daughter is also having nickname Manu. So she is very close to my heart also. Like she is a single mother. She has two daughters. Her husband left her because she has given birth two daughters. She is working in TCS, Bhubaneswar, and she is taking care of her old parents. She is staying in my hometown. She gets up early in the morning, four o'clock. She doesn't have any house help. She does all the house chores. She takes, she cooks food for her daughters. She sends them to school. She does her office work. She does everything. When I see her, I ask, Manu, to get the motivation, go to Bauju. When I see Nodia, to get the motivation, go to Asuchi. How you can manage so many things? How you can do so many things? So when I see her, she does puja. She does everything. And always she carries a smile on her face. I will not see that she is depressed because she is not having husband to support her. She is having old parents to take care. So whenever I see, I see I have everything in my life. So we should get motivation from others. We should be always smiling. We should not feel bad that we have nothing in our life. We have like we have not having enough in our life to be happy. There is always positive sides. Then this is what like we should be always feeling that what God has given to us. As we should praise ourselves and we should keep ourselves motivated. So from this. I will tell that, like, we should not compare ourselves that, like, when uh, so many times we feel unhappy because we compare ourselves. We don't have enough money like Ambanzo. We see Ambanzo. <laughs> <laughs> so they're spending 2,700 crores in marriages. <laughs> we think we should come out from our thoughts. There are so many people who are down, like, below us. They are not giving, they are not getting food to eat. They are not having roof on their head. <laughs> They, thought, they are not having enough clothes to wear. They are, they are not able to send their kids to school. So we should not compare ourselves. We should, com we should compare ourselves positively. We should not compare ourselves negatively with others. We can motivate ourselves to go up, but staying happy in our current situation. We should not be sad in our current situation. Then we should do something to motivate ourselves. You, are, you see every day if you are improving or not. That you should say, like you are improving or not. Then third, always have the gratitude feeling. Always think that you are so lucky, you are so blessed, you have everything around, and just try to be, make out best out of it. Then fourth is that, like, be true to yourself. Don't be fake. Don't be fake. Always be true to you. You know that you are doing right. You are not faking yourself. The what you are from internally, just represent yourself or externally that way. Don't fake yourself. Like you only evaluate yourself that you are doing good, you are doing better. That is the best thing to be happy. Self-love. Love. You should cultivate self-love. Like you do something that will help you to improve every day so that you will be happy. So all these things if you will do, you will feel that you are getting enough to be happy in your life. You have a good job, you have a good family, you have good friends around you, you have everything around you to support. So just, I say, like, it's normal human tendency that we'll get that feeling, but we should come out from that feeling, we should motivate ourselves, and we should 
embrace life's opportunity with welcoming heart and open hands. Thank you. Master Namda, I think I had heard a beautiful quote that we all will start feeling rich once we realize what we have. So, moving on to our last but absolutely not the least speech. Um, I would like to welcome evaluator for uh, speech number four. Uh, Thank you. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Today, Toastmaster Abhinav will be attempting his final speech from the path that he was pursuing. This, this uh, project is called Reflect on Your Path. The purpose of this project, as well as of this speech, is for the member, which is Abhinav, to share uh, and reflect on his growth during the completion of this path. The duration of the speech is 10 to 12 minutes. Abhinav, how would you like the timing cards to be displayed? 10, 10, 10, 10 11, 12 is fine. All right. So Swati, uh, please note, uh, green at 10, 11, yellow, and red at 12. Abhinav, all the very best. Abhinav. Let's welcome our speaker. He is part of Oracle Retail AI Foundation apps team. He has been a Toastmaster since 2016. He has served in district and club officer roles several times. He likes to stay creative by writing blogs, designing graphics, and crafting beautiful speeches. Please welcome the incredible Toastmaster Abhinav. And the speech title is uh, Be Like an Ant. It's A and D, not A U N. <laughs> like, uh, thank you, Mr. Do I mean, Dosmaster Abhipsha. So, this is my final, final speech. I'm not going away, but this is still my final speech according to the pathways. I started Dosmaster's journey way back in June 2016. Since then, I have finished. This is my second part. So, this second part now. About 30 speeches in two parts. I did advanced communicator bronze, 10 speeches. I did communicator also, again 10 speeches. Despite 60 speech speeches and all, this hard hustle pounding, <laughs> the exercise shivering, I still have the quality wobbles in my stomach. So if there's a mistake, please apologize. I apologize in advance. All right. So you must have seen an aunt going somewhere. EMP. <laughs> <laughs> If you try to put an obstacle in their path, you will see like if you put a stone or put a water droplet in the path, they'll find a different way. They'll keep going at it. Similar to, similar to that, people who are actually achievers in their lives have this tendency of never getting up. Despite what happens, despite it takes a long time for them to complete, they never give up. You might have heard stories of J.K. Rowling, who did, uh, who wrote the book of Harry Potter, and went to 14 publishers, they all said no, eventually got succeeded. Or Thomas Edison, thousand times he tried to make a bulb. It didn't pass a thousand times, but at least one thousand one time, he passed. So the, all the great people, or the achievers basically, not great necessarily, but achievers in their lives, have tendency of never giving up. You see, the, the path to achieve something is never a straight line. There are always the obstacles, the life will come in a way as well. So I conclude that all the speakers, all the achievers, great, great speakers or great people in their lives have four tendencies in them. One is perseverance. They persevere all the time. Adaptability. Whatever happens in their lives, some obstacle comes, life things happen, they adapt to that and move on. Third is determination. They have a set goal in their mind. And eventually, with whatever courage they can gather, they reach and determine and uh, reach their destination. And last is teamwork, because nothing can happen without their team altogether. Today through my journey in pathways, I'm going to share all the speeches I've done till now, and probably it can help you get motivated, get inspired. And all those who think that when completing in paths is a big deal not together, I hopefully I can convince you that it's not that a big deal. So like I told you, I joined Toastmasters way back in June 2016. It's almost eight years now. I never thought I'd become the greatest speaker ever. That was not my goal. But I want to try something. 
I thought that I can go on the stage and speak something. I wanted to try to see how can I speak. And maybe if out of 100 people, one person can get motivated or get inspired by me, that'll be good enough for me. That was my intention. I never aimed to become a great speaker who get a lot of claps in bigger stadiums and all. That was not my intention. Although everybody likes that if that happens, <laughs> but that was not my goal. So my goal was to persevere slowly and slowly. I come to this pathway directly, presentation mastery. I delivered my icebreaker way back in November 2021. And fortunately, or unfortunately, I was doing masters that time. So I was very, very busy. COVID was going on. And I just finished my previous pathway a few days back. I didn't want to be an icebreaker anyway, so I did it. Fortunately, I also became a father that time, uh, two months back, September. So obviously, I didn't have time, energy, because all the nights were in <laughs> like this. I didn't have energy to do any speeches at all. I thought I already achieved one path, so it was okay. So I delayed for one year. I did a few more months. Eventually, I came back to Bangalore, and I thought, no, enough is enough. I got an opportunity now to come back to the main, the main pathway I had started for presentation mastery. I started back again. So in August of 2023, I started my pathway journey back again. I can show you my speeches if that helps to get perspective. Although that's not required, but I'll do it. It'll help people to know that it takes a lot of effort to do speeches and you will get a lot of obstacles as well. So like I told you, August 2023 is when I started my speech back again. I mean, you not see the screen all the time. There's nothing special there. There's only one slide. My point is, in Oracle, I have spent almost 10 years now. First five years was a cakewalk. I had work to do, but not that critical or not that painstaking. But last five years have been like, whatever work, whatever, since I've done my past, I now have to pay for that. <laughs> so work increased. My life had responsibilities. COVID was going on. So many things happened. So the work pressure that is still going on, it's not ended till now, came in the way again and again. So if you see, I tried to make a uh, goal that every month I give one speech. Every month, one speech was my goal. So in August, I delivered a speech about baggage in mind. This speech was about the initial result of my Toastmaster journey. When I had a different expectation altogether in Toastmasters, I had a baggage in my mind, which eventually got lifted away, and I could resume my journey properly again. I'll not go into details of the speech though, but this was my evaluation and feedback speech. I had to give a speech, get feedback, I improved on it, and delivered it again. Then came the research and presenting speech. In this, I had to research on something, some project, about a topic, and present the speech. The title of the speech was The New Indian Adhesive. And that the story was about ISRO. How ISRO as an organization has become one of the most critical things, paramount to Indians' confidence, that we now get a lot of pride in it. That was, second, that was my element P3, uh, P4. Then level one completed, level two started. I did a speech about communication styles. The speech is called, do you know when to shut up? I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> but I tried to learn few ways in which you should stop, um, shut up when you, the time actually arrives. Then was the speech about body language. This was speech which is very close to my heart. It was about how to be a superhero, or how to do back donation. I delivered the speech way back when I was doing CC that time. There was a similar kind of speech again. So, you know, it takes a lot of blood and sweat to any speeches. I literally did blood donation two days back <laughs> and sweating already. So it takes a lot of blood and sweat to do any speeches. Then again, my very critical speech came, which was about mentoring. In Toastmasters, like I told you, there were a lot of instances when I thought I'll give up. Because this is too much of an effort to do a speech again and again. Too much of an effort to get evaluated again and again. And sometimes you, the evaluation is not even good for you. But you have to still absorb it. But that time, few people who are not lifted by mentors, but actually, I saw them as my mentors, and they don't know maybe they are, I'm, they are, I mean, mentors or not. They helped me continue with my journey. I'll tell about two names. One was uh, Dr. Adi Manwani, who is from Bangalore's Master Club. One was Begla Devi. He has passed away, though, but these two people have shaped my journey to continue in those masters. 
I was actually given, I had given up one time. Then after level two, what really happens is that your avenues open up and you get the project which are actually required in your professional life as well. They become more challenging. So people are still at level one, level two, I'll encourage them to go to level three as well. In this, I did a very controversial speech about persuasive speak, uh, speaking. I told everybody to go vegetarian. <laughs> and that time, everybody in the audience was not vegetarian. <laughs> Uh, and initially we had veg biryani, it was considered not a biryani, but still we did it. That means some people actually got that. <laughs> and then the most interesting uh, topics came. Eco, eco. <laughs> All right. That was like active listening. So active listening is a project which is very easy. All you have to do is become an evaluator or a table topics master. Just by doing table topics master, whatever you will speak on it, you just react on it. That is the work of practice of the speech. I did one more very easy speech called the unit passion software. I think everybody knows how to use PPT. That was a project. But this is something you should do bigger things. So this was one thing. I did a education session on, on pathways, what pathways basically mean. That was that project. Now level was actually now your presentation skills and the public speaking skills come to the fore. I did a project about managing a difficult audience in which people had to interrupt me multiple times. It was about 15 minute speech. And a lot of people interrupted me a lot. Not as much as I wanted to, but actually they tried. But that was a big learning because in real life, people interrupt you when you speak. Not like the room is silent always. Level four also had one of, one of my most favorite projects about making a podcast. I had most fun in this project. It was not only doing a podcast verbally, I had to record, edit, put on YouTube, several channels of podcasting, I mean Spotify and all. So a lot of learning was there. And probably this is one thing which we can actually take it forward. We have already a podcast in our, on our YouTube group called Trade Business Book Club. Anybody else can also pitch in and continue with this forward. The biggest project was level five prepared to speak professionally, in which I had to speak for 20 minutes or so. I spoke for 19 minutes, uh, 18 minutes, 20 minutes. But this was one of the most important project because as a public speaker, all you want to speak all you want to do is speak for a big duration because all good public speakers can speak for more than one hour. Speaking for 20 minutes itself is also a big deal for me. <laughs> Here I talked about uh, my something which happened to me in past, like uh, one of my things I made became viral on the internet, became popular, uh, posters and all. So it, that was really good. Again, my more interesting project was elective this time called moderate panel discussion. This required a lot of preparation. I had to convince a lot of people to do it, people agreed and they had to back out because of something or the other. So this was a challenging topic in itself by, because the panel discussion can be done easily, but to connect with the audience, connect with the panel, panel mem members and all, will take some time. I got a lot, lot of learnings from this and I think everybody enjoyed it a lot. And today's the last speech of that, that is reflected on the path. So, there's a famous blogger called Casey Neistat, you will have seen on the YouTube and all. So he says, which I totally agree with, that in a room of people, you might not be the most good looking, you might not be the most intelligent, but if you keep working hard, if you keep at it, slowly and surely, you'll succeed. Whatever goals you have in mind. Same things, Atomic Habits author James Clear has said. The like intensity will make a good story. If you do something very intensely, it'll make a good headline as well. But only consistency will make Progressive and progress. A lot of people learn Toastmasters, but they give up easily. What I suggest you, what I urge you all, I appeal to all of you. There will be a lot of things in your life, and it will put you like in a, in a bind, like irons in the fire. But if you keep at it, you will succeed. I'll just end by a small quote by Ray Kroc, one of the CEOs of uh, McDonald's. He said, in the, in the world, a lot of talented people are there. They always fail. Many people will fail. There are a lot of geniuses. And the world is full of geniuses who never succeeded. Education can help you go a certain way. But in education can't really help you because there are a lot of educated fools around the market. The only thing which can help you in your long run is perseverance. What are you doing? Keep at it. Be like an actor. Thank you.
Wow, that was a very inspiring speech. Having taken the same pathway, I don't know how I'll complete with such, you know, he tell you every speech of his has something to learn that we can imbibe in our speeches. And there's one takeaway, huge takeaway from his speeches, persevere, persevere, persevere. Doesn't matter if you're very talented or not. Great speech. I think you have inspired all of us, not just one or two. Thank you. I mean, uh, <laughs> Okay, so moving on, I'll just come to the last section of uh, our theme today. Yeah, so we stopped here. My last question. The preparations for Rathyatra happens or starts much earlier. Can you guess when it starts? Actually, when it starts, the preparation. Oh, Anyone? March. Hmm? March. July. <laughs> In July, thanks. Anyone else? You financial year. April. <laughs> okay, no. <laughs> Only one month is left, I think, in the first half of the year. It's February. <laughs> so, uh, around Basant Panchami or Saraswati Puja, as we say, it starts. So, the first process, I'll just quickly describe the process step by step. The first is, as we say in Odia, Ratha Katha Anukula is uh, worshipping the wood that will be used to prepare the rats. And by Akshay Tritya, this uh, completes and the actual building of the chariots starts to happen. So Akshay Tritya is very auspicious for Odia people. We actually buy gold on Akshay Tritya rather than on Dhanteras. So yeah, moving on. The next process is whenever you are prepping up, you know, getting excited to go to your aunt's home and enjoying, what do you do? You take a bath and you pack your bags and everything. So they did it a little bit, you know, uh, to the extreme. Uh, so the total uh, pots of water in the common earthen pots, it is total uh, totaling to 108 pitchers of water. Uh, individually, I don't remember the count, but totals to 108. This is called Snan Yatra. And uh, the Lord or the deities are taken to the bathing platform. And in that water, sandalwood paste, camphor and all sorts of other flowers, fragrances are mixed. And they are given the bathing ceremony. So after, you know, bathing too much, everything, what, what happens? Any, any guesses? They fall sick. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, so they fall sick. This period is called Anasara. This, for this period, uh, like for the span of 15 days, they stay sick. And they stay in a secluded uh, place and no one is allowed to meet or have darshan. They go undergo uh, treatment. Rathi Atra also uh, depicts a unique mix of divinity along with human emotions, human behaviors also. So this shows that they fall sick, they recover ultimately. But like we humans don't want to meet anyone when we are sick, when you are feeling low. Like that they also don't meet anyone. But after they recover, Rathi Atra happens. So this is Rathi Atra as we know. So there are uh, three important steps, or two important steps in uh, Rathyatra. There are many rituals actually. But the first one is Pahandi. Pahandi is nothing but the procession of the three deities along with Sudarshan to the chariots. And as you can see, <coughs> there's a beautiful head gear which is on the Lord. And this is called Tahya. So the Tahya work is a very intricate work done using solo and uh, using the uh, flowered buds of jasmine. To prepare this, this is done by particularly one mutt called Raghav Das Mutt of Puri. And uh, they give this to uh, the temple. And this is also used by Odyssey dancers as well, the small form of this. The next step, important step is Chera Pohara. So, uh, Pohara is grooming, cleaning up. So, uh, this is the Raja or the king of Puri who is doing the act. This also signifies that no work is really small even for a king. So this activity is done. These are the two main things. And then the chariot is pulled and is taken from Sri Mandir or the main temple to the Gundisha temple. Now, as we can see in the next uh, uh, photo, all the three lords are enjoying lots of dishes and having fun at Gundisha temple. And meanwhile, someone back at home is calculating days. <laughs> One day, two day, three day, she's waiting and calculating. And she loses her patience on the sixth day. Enough is enough. I was not taken by the Lord. I'll go and break their uh, rats so that they, do, they won't be able to come back. 
So this is called Hera Panchami. On the sixth day, Lakshmi actually goes and breaks the rath so that they won't be able to come. It is her anger, which is also you know very common in human like. Your husband goes with your siblings and enjoys and has not taken you. What what is the expectation like? What do you expect? A happy wife? No. <laughs> but somehow Jagannath and all the uh, other two deities uh, come back. Uh, the this is called Bahuda Jatra and some people and in Hindi I think it's called Ulta Rathyatra. But uh, please I request uh, just use Bahuda Yatra. Ulta Rathyatra sounds. Bahuda is written. Huh? Yeah, exactly. But ulta sounds like something reverse we are doing. So, yeah. So, this Bahuda happens on the 10th day. Then, this is the Suna Visa or uh, golden avatar, you can say, of the three deities. They are still on the rats. They are not gone into the main temple yet. Uh, after this, so now uh, Jagannath wants to enter the temple. But uh, already uh, Subhadra and uh, Balabhadra have entered and they are laughing and giggling because they know Lakshmi is extremely angry and she is not letting Jagannath inside the home. Exactly like a wife would do, a frustrated wife would do. So Jagannath looks very apologetic and the ultimate thing, Rasgulla has been brought by Jagannath to impress and uh, please her wife and ask for forgiveness. Finally, she forgives. Uh, he makes her eat Rasgullas. And yeah, he gets to go inside the temple. This is called Niladri Vijay, which is uh, which will happen today actually. This is the process, and then they are back to the main abode of Puri Temple. And that was it. All the details, I think, whatever I can pack into this presentation about Rathyatra. I hope you liked it. Yes. Thank you. And do visit me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so with this, uh... it was beautiful, Abhipsha. Loved it. <laughs> yeah, great work. Thank you. Okay, so moving on. Uh, now it's time to call the general evaluator um, to give his evaluations along with his tag sheet. Welcome, Toastmaster Ali. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now my next trip is for Puri. <laughs> and a lot of you already are thinking to go to Puri during the ending Rath Yatra, right? So a lot of you, even the people from Odisha haven't gone to Puri to Rath Yatra. <laughs> so what? Yeah. All the day. Okay. Okay, so we will start with the evaluations, the speech evaluations first. So the first speaker was David. I see he has left, but we can still go ahead with the evaluations. Uh, with Toastmaster Karthik, then we have the evaluation. Are we ready? Yes. 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 Okay, great. So Toastmaster Devi is not here, but uh, I'm sure she'll see the recording. And thanks for letting me know she's not here. Okay, so a great topic. What a great topic, childhood memories, very relatable. Who will not relate to their sibling rivalry, sibling fights, sharing of experiences, sharing of the toys. Three different stories intervened into each other in such a beautiful way that it brings out all the different emotions which each one of us experienced when we were kids. And it goes on and ties back to Jagannath's story and the theme of the day so beautifully that it's so easily relatable and flow continues. So a great choice of top, uh, great choice for the topic and the way presented, they, Toastmaster Devi presented. Kudos to her. All, I also, what uh, stood out for me was how she engaged the audience. The audience was already engaged with the Jagannath story and this uh, childhood memory is also coming in. And then she also asked questions from the start, at the start, as well as in the middle, just to keep a check that everyone is listening to her. So that went very well. Audin continued to remain engaged. And a beautiful set of stories which intervene with each other. And delivery was also very well, very executed. There are two things which I would suggest Postmaster Devi to challenge herself and do and try and do more next time is 
connecting with the audience via body language. What I noticed in the start was that she was walking like this, walking like this, and had a paper in her hand, which she never referred to. So there was no need of paper also. Maybe she could have placed the paper here. Maybe it was not, uh, not that visible, like holding in her hand so that the focus of attention is her, not the piece of paper. And then delivers uh, standing straight like this and looking at audience left, right and center. Center audience is where the online audience is. That's also important. So doing that, I think she will connect even more to the audience. Second is use a vocal variety like slowing, speaking fast, speaking higher, or pausing. For example, when she said that she had hit her head, she could have enacted and said that fathers asked, what happened? Papa, I fell down. No, he must have hit her. Maybe using vocal variety like this, a little bit of enactment would engage Make the, make the engagement at a next level and improve the humor as well. I think these two things, if she tries and continues engaging the audience, I think she will be a fabulous speaker and a very strong member of this club and lots of learnings to all of us from the way she presented. So that's my evaluation. Thank you for listening to me. But again, thanks for reminding us being recorded, you know, and what I do when a speaker is not there, I provide a very critical feedback, you know. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so the second speaker was Toastmaster Krishna, and I am the evaluator for, yeah, so congratulations on completing your second speech. So the, uh, after the first speech, now the second speech objective is, it should be a kind of properly organized speech, it should have a, uh, opening body and conclusion, right? So that was objective of the speech. So I would say very well written speech. You started with a prop. I think mean, that is uh, that was a highlight for me. You used the prop in starting and then you referred in the middle. And then while you were concluding also, you used the prop. So I think very great usage of the prop, uh, the, the wallet and, and the mobile. So well done on that part. And also uh, during the story, I think it was uh, kind of a personal story. So I was able to relate to it. I think every word. But he was able to relate to the story. So I think uh, well done on that part. It was uh, uh, very well organized also. And uh, you also use the gestures, right? While we're talking to different characters, you use the gestures. So that is, I think, great part. Uh, in that, I think you can also include the kind of voice. I, but that speech will come later. So although the objective is uh, for this speech, it was the opening body conclusion. But the next speech would be regarding body language or gestures. But I think already tried to you know, you know utilize uh, those, those part also in this speech. So well done on that. Uh, and you were very confident on stage. I think being only second speech, I think people kind of floundered in the second speech. But you were very confident, very clear. Like there was not any word which was not uh, I wanted even to grasp. So it was very the, the clarity was on point. I would say. Uh, so only feedback, I think, on the story I would like to give that while you're telling a story, you can tell the name of the station, right? People can relate, right? So like, what was the name of the station while we were lost, okay? So that you can do. But all in all, I would say it, it has a very great message. Like you quoted, you know, the, uh, I mean, people will not remember anything, but when you are kind with them, you will remember always, right? So I think great speech and uh, very well done. And I congratulate you again for completing the speech. Thank you. So the third speaker was Toastmaster Amita uh, Mamata, evaluated by Toastmaster Narayanan. Can we have the evaluation? Okay, gentlemen. All hail Professor Mamata. <laughs> so, uh, for those of you who have been watching the evaluation from High Step today, I'm sure you've seen that she is slowly but steadily shifting gears. Full marks to Mamata on controlling the stage. Good job done there. Even before starting, even before the MC could uh, literally hand out the stage, you got responses from audience saying that no, I didn't get anything from what you wanted. <laughs> and that 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 kind of kind of gives you an impetus that you know you have thought about the topic subject very well and the title. Usually, you know, we judge movies by the title. The title is inquisitive. People generally go there and see. You know, what happens after go to the theater is different story altogether. But then you know. 
you strike a balance, you make something very, the topic was, yeah. are you getting enough to be happy? The moment she announced it, we had a response saying, no, 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 no. <laughs> so, you know, it was kept simple, the correct was done very instantaneously. A mark of a good communicator always is what I have been trained, told is that we establish a very quick and a very last longing connection. You did that immediately when we could start a speech, so kudos to you on that. Uh, I said that you are shifting gears because subtle humor, deployment of humor, and that too in cliche areas. I always used to say, you watch this, this, when someone talks about husband wife jokes, in-laws jokes, you know, I kind of done man, let's do something else. But you know, the way you presented that, it was refreshing, talking about, um, cribbing about in people at home, your siblings, your husband and so on. It was a cliche topic, but then, it was refreshing to hear from you because it was posted differently in the context of the speech. Job very well done there. Uh, I'm someone who is alien to humor, but I can still give you that, you know, you're tipping towards it, continue to improve that, great job. And uh, uh, very relatable areas in terms of how gratitude, the quantum of gratitude that we should show in terms of where we are, the kind of safety that we enjoy, the gratitude that we show to the Almighty, simple things that we encounter day in, day out, it was restored very clearly. Good job done there. Now, the areas where I want to focus next to make this speech go to the next level is, um, you just talk about a lot of scripting, so compliance in our everyday life. I don't have that, I don't have this, I don't have this. And after every complaint level, you started giving solutions immediately. No salary, but still I have a job. Husband wants scripting, but he's still carrying. Now, question, answer, question, answer, question, answer. Now, this is a recommended style, but then what would happen is that you kind of lose track of what did she tell first. Point one, answer one, point two, answer two, point three, then what was point one? When you come to point five, I forget point one. So my style would be, missed out all the cribbings in one shot. This is what I would do. Missed out all the cribbings. Bring a drama there. Your friend who's a single mother, hats off. I've seen people do that. It is very easy for us to dramatize, but it's really, really hard to live that life. That means dramatization. If you have pulled a story out of that, it could have lasted the impression much longer. So, push out all the questions first, bring a story there, conclude with your solution. That will be a takeaway. Um, because, you know, it's very pertinent that, you know, you kind of endorse what you're trying to say. If you keep adding a lot of pointers, it becomes too much of fire on the fire. Got it? So, make a story out of it. You are right there on track. Let's keep pushing it. You'll be there. Um, brilliant job then. I would like to see you more on these kind of, uh, you know, endeavors in the days to come. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. So that was a wonderful evaluation for a great speech by Toastmaster Mamata. And I think the speech was uh, regarding the being grateful to a lot of people, even to us, Ben, right? And my wife won't agree with that. <laughs> She's kind of frustrated with me many times. So, so that, that is why whatever she says is too paramount importance to me, you know? Finally, I'm using the word. My wife helps sometimes. <laughs> So, okay, so the fourth speech by Toastmaster Avila, evaluated by Toastmaster Nathan. All right, uh, there's one line that Avila mentioned in his evaluation, in his speech that I would like to point out. He said, not all evaluators are good for you. <laughs> <laughs> point noted, Avila. <laughs> No, but jokes aside, uh, one of the things that I liked up enough really about the speech was because the speech was reflect on your path, you started with some context setting. You spoke about the number of speeches that you have done before, right? Uh, and you gave the number of 60 speeches that you have done before, and yet you still have uh, the fearfulness, you still have the jitters that come from stage, uh, which goes on to show that, you know, hey, this is normal. Uh, even for someone as experienced as Abhinav, who has been here for seven to eight years, versus you who have come here in the last week, it's fine, have a everyone, right? So it, it was a good job that you did over there, Abhinav. Um, I really like the summary that you presented, uh, which was there on the screen. And I would request you to share that notion template in the group as well, so that others can also, you know, make one. But you took us through the journey of, of your particular path. You spoke about, you know, your own personal life. You spoke about the barriers that stop you from starting the path. We show that, hey, these are things that even we go through. You know, I mean, half of us don't have kids, but that's fine. We will also have at some point in future, which are just barriers to, you know, starting a path or starting any journey for that matter, right? So all of that was very inspiring and, and it was a really good thing that you have done there. Uh, given the fact that you have finished two paths now, 
I will be a little more critical. If that's okay yeah. with you. Fantastic. <laughs> Um, one of the things that I was looking for was why presentation mastery? You know, so let's say you've chosen this path. Why have you chosen this path, right? Number one, uh, give us a little bit of information on, you know, what's the whole point behind this path? You have, you have 11 paths. You have already done once. You have 10 paths now. Why not any of the other paths? Right? Why presentation mastery in specific? Two, what is the difference that you see in yourself now? What was the opinion of before presentation mastery versus what is the opinion of after presentation mastery, right? So that shows the kind of impact that the path has had on you. That shows your growth as well as the improvement that you have made in your own personal journey as a toast matra as a public speaker or something that I was looking out for. Lastly, and this is something that is confusing for me as well. I was just looking through the, uh, the presentation mastery information on the Toastmasters International page and it gave me a very generic line about what present presentation mastery is. I am sure others might also feel the same if they say they would go through that page, right? Uh, so my, what another thing that I was looking out for was how is presentation mastery different from other paths, right? If you go through the Toastmasters page of all the pathways, you will notice that all the paths have similar projects, a lot of overlapping projects. So why is it that I should choose presentation mastery? What will I get out of it and all of those things, right? So a little bit of information around these sense would have given me a whole overall picture on what the path is all about, as well as what your journey has been, because you will again give your own insights about those. So that was something that I was looking out for. But overall, I, mean, I found it really, really inspiring. The fact that you have done 60 speeches, you're still here, you're still going on, shows that you know we should all take a little bit of it from you and you know, go on with our journey as well. So thank you so much for being an inspiration for the club. Um, Thank you. So that's a wonderful evaluation. So now is the time for tag team report. Starting with the timer report, if you can list out the time taken by all the speakers, please. Yeah. Coming to speeches, JV took seven minutes thirty six seconds. Supreet took exactly five minutes. Sorry, Krishna took exactly five minutes. Mamta took seven minutes, 10 seconds. Abhinav took 13 minutes, one second. And uh, coming to evaluators, Karthik took uh, three minutes, 10 seconds. Anek took two minutes, zero, uh, eight seconds. Na uh, Narana took three minutes, 21 seconds. And Nitin took three minutes, 19 seconds. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. A big round of applause for you. And the second is our counter report by Toastmaster Bernali. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, when I started this role today, I thought it's of paramount importance. And I have a lot of too many, uh, what was that? Sorry, too many irons on the fi uh, fire <laughs> I had to use. So, um, but I must tell you, this is such a wonderful group of speakers today, especially because we didn't have table topics, maybe. I didn't find anything to note down. I was literally trying to, you know, use a magnifying glass and try to hear <laughs> if I can hear some arms and all that. But really nothing came up. All I could say is it was wonderful. I think the speakers did excellent, in, especially with the fillers and things like that. Nothing was used. Uh, laughter generator, I think you all did a great job. Devi started um, with some moments which were really uh, funny. People laughed. Uh, Mamta, oh my God, the moment she started with lost and found, I think everybody started <laughs> laughing. I got lost somewhere. Okay, so... Um, that was one again, the husband the husband uh, joke kind of not up to my expectations. <laughs> so, so definitely all those um, generated a lot of laughter. Abhinav's uh, uh, thing when he said, do you know when to shut up? And I don't know when to shut up. So that was funny. And uh, Anek generated laughter, Nitin generated laughter, and I'm sure many more. So fabulous. I think more than our counter, I think we should change this role to laughter counter or something like that because ours aren't uh, really audible anymore. Thank you so much. Over to G. 
Yeah, I think laughter counter is good idea. What do you think? We have no, anyway, heart counter. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have heart counter. Yes. That's great. So now the Grammarian report by Toastmaster Ravindra. Yeah. So, I same like our Bernali said, I was using the magnifying glass to find the, <laughs> if any wrong usage of sentences and wrong usage of grammar, I could not find any, but little bit I could find, but I did not make a lot of it. So, but there is a lot of good usage uh, in the speeches. A uh, few of the words where uh, my anger turned into fear, uh, whether we choose a gun or a rose, uh, tug of war, and then Krishna's speech, uh, this essence of humanity, personal endeavor. Uh, there are a few words like spooky, skeptical, persisted, blend of trust and kindness, empathetic listening. Uh, there is a quote given by Krishna, uh, if not make a note of it, be kind to something. Uh, so used uh, so Toastmaster of the day used uh, wonderful words like persuaded, ardent devotee, incredible Toastmaster, divinity. So Mamta used uh, gra gratitude feeling, uh, global crisis, democratic country, house chores, and embrace life opportunities and be happy. So Abhinav used uh, wonderful usage. Uh, Reflect on your path growth, be like an ant. So that's the theme. Uh, and he used words uh, which reflect in our lives, like perseverance, adaptability, and determination. So, and our word of the day is used by Kartik, Devi, Abhinav, Anek, and Barnali. So, ions in the fire, like phrase of the day is used by Dinesh, Abhinav, and Barnali. Thank you, Kirk. Over to you. Thank you. I actually heard islands in the hill a lot of times. So other people didn't use? Yeah, islands are used. <laughs> okay, so now it's the time for my general evaluation report. I think I will be brief since we are we don't have much time. But yeah, starting with so Sajin that I'm Ravindra, I think you clearly mentioned three rules of the meeting. And then I think Venu was also very properly. And you also give the precious and introduction. That is a good part. Uh, I think what uh, you can do, you can be a little more energetic. I, tell, become, I mean, kind of general feedback. And uh, you can also talk about the theme a little bit, I mean, whatever you have. So that will also give you a little more time on the stage, right? So you can take maybe a couple of minutes to talk about the theme. Uh, so that is one. And then, uh, uh, coming to the president, always, I mean, he is energetic as always, so well done. I think uh, from that to on, I think energy was continued uh, throughout the meeting. Great. Uh, I think you uh, welcomed the audience and then uh, uh, introduced the TMI, you introduced the theme also, and then introduced the TMOD uh, very well. So I think well done. And you can also ask for maybe one thing I would say the guest, uh, maybe you already know who is guest, who is not. We still check like there. Do we have any guests? Maybe so. We don't have any guests right today. No, do we at that moment? We cannot. Okay, okay, <laughs> so that's okay. fine. So, yep, yeah, uh, coming to TMOD, I think that uh, I will check done a really great job. Let's have a big round of applause. For now, the preparations he has done for the topic is immense. I would say, I think it might have taken a lot of time. But uh, very diligent in preparing the slides and giving no, stories and ideas. Okay, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> but you already know the subject. We were oh, from the Odisha yeah. and you are from there. So you know the story, you know the drill. So yeah. And we also got to know a lot of things like I didn't know these many things about, although we hear about the theatre a lot, but we don't know the, the facts about it. So that's what I got to know. And I think I will Google it more, right? So I think all of you are going to do that, like what uh, means what. So yeah, I think well done on uh, that. Uh, uh, so I would say, I think uh, just uh, one feedback, I would say that uh, uh, during the speech, if I'm a little brief, so like there was a speech one after other. So maybe I think you can uh, fill up after the speech or before the speech part, but, but I mean, during the speech, you can uh, manage that flow, I mean. Uh, so during the speech, it, it, it will be more uh, kind of the meeting flow would be better if you can be a little brief during the speeches. 
So uh, I mean, uh, uh, although we don't have a table topic point, otherwise we get uh, more slots to fill in the TMOD thing, like the whole uh, TM before TTM, after TTM, and then up before speech, after speech part. But I think since we did not have a TTM role, that is why probably you had to do it uh, middle of the speech. Eh? But they are think well done after uh, all. Uh, apart from that, uh, there is no other feedback I have. All the evaluators did a great job, and uh, I think. Uh, the only point I get is I don't get evaluated, you know, as a general evaluator. <laughs> Although I covered a few things, I maybe I did not introduce the tag team that was uh, kind of missed from, from my side. And, uh, and one thing I can say, like, uh, you, you don't need to, uh, like for a TMO, you don't need to introduce the people kind of twice. So just take a note, let's say, I mean, or uh, for introducing, I think, uh, what I've seen in general, instead of reading all the things people have written, you can take uh, kind of a couple of things. Or you can add your own kind of your own observation of the speaker that will be a little more interesting rather than repeating what they have written. And you can take just a couple of lines from there and then just add our uh, like whatever your observation for the speaker. So that's all I have. Thank you very much. And I call back President. Thank you so much, General Evaluator. What a wonderful session. And it's not my bias because I'm from Odisha, but it was wonderful, <laughs> Amiksha. Great. I have heard all of these stories, but it was wonderful to hear them again and to know that everybody, at least in the room, got to know about the story and they'll remember it forever. Okay, now without wasting any more time, I think uh, the ballots are ready, right, Ramila? Okay. Okay, uh, before that, I think uh, Pooja. No, not Pooja. Shelly. My bad. <laughs> so you joined a little late. So would you like to come here, share your feedback, or you can even share from there. How was the meeting today? How did you like it? Yeah, you can come. Uh, it's fine. So first time I heard the Rath Yatra, I didn't even remember the name actually. So I joined it a little late, so I didn't understand it, but this story my mom told me that uh, somebody opens the door and the uh, address was not complete. So only that thing I know, I didn't know it's linked. So that was a really good uh, information. And the end story is always is really good. It was really motivating. I, I never you know, I never imagined that somebody can uh, motivate you in 10, 10 minutes. So it was <laughs> So yeah, that's, that's it. thank you so much. Okay, I think the ballots are yeah. So, uh, please cast your vote. And Ravindra would announce the winners. We have all the votes. Only seven people have voted till now. Eight. Eight people have voted and it ran. We had four speakers, so it's a tough one. <laughs> Well, uh, should we find that here? That we have to... it will not change now. So yeah, yeah. Okay. So there is a paramount flow of results. <laughs> <laughs> so the best speaker goes to Taitanya. The best evaluator. Postmaster Nitin. Best evaluator. <laughs> <laughs> and best meeting role taker goes to Postmaster of the Day, Abhip Shah. Mm -hmm. 
and best in auxiliary role goes to Toastmaster Bernali for our counter. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Ravindra, well deserved winners. Okay, without wasting any time, let's just close this meeting. I'll request uh, uh, Toastmaster Karthik if you could take, take a pick of us. Please, everybody, if you can come to the stage. That is why I'm online <laughs> to take this pick. Toastmaster in the, the middle, the star of this. I hear the post. Everyone online can also come. I see Joseph has come. Hey, hi, Joseph. Hello, Joseph. Hey, it's silent. Who said they'll decide? Okay. I think we are losing you. I think everyone is visible, yeah. Why are you hiding? Okay, smile. One more. Well done. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you. Thank you.